It has been 10 years since the extremely violent and unfortunately deadly EF5 tornado moved through Moore, Oklahoma. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we are going to take a look back at some of the archive radar data, the intense data that came in that impacted people's lives here on May 20th, 2013 in Moore, Oklahoma, which unfortunately has had an awful run with these violent tornadoes. We are going to take a look at that and just how insane that some of these tornado paths have been. So stick around for that. Also towards the end of the video, you need to stick around for this crazy, crazy stat here. There has not been an EF5 tornado in the United States since May 20th, 2013 in Moore, Oklahoma. I have a really crazy stat for you, so you need to stick around to the end of the video for that. Hey, if you enjoy weather content, if you like tracking the weather, you've come to the right place. If you want more weather content, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that, and if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. Please like this video as well. That really does help us out a lot. All right, so we're going to start with the archive radar. I know it says live at the top here, but I want to be clear. This is an archive. This is a look back here at May 20th, 2013. And here are the makings of that violent tornado. A little thunderstorm, just a tiny guy popping up here northwest of Newcastle. This was a day that was to be expected. Unfortunately, the environment was rich in producing these violent tornadoes. But there is the start of it. Not even a supercell just yet. And you see it quickly. I want to point out how fast this supercell thunderstorm came together and produced this violent EF5 tornado. So here we go now approaching 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is going to be at 345. It is raining heavily. See all that red and purple? It's probably some hail already falling in more as well. The most dangerous part of this storm, though, was developing way back to the west, northwest of Newcastle, this hook echo developing here. Every now and then I'm going to bounce between the reflectivity mode, which we are looking at right now, and then the velocity mode. That's how we can see the rotation in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And we're starting to see some of that right now. The mesocyclone developing here. The green represents the wind going toward the radar. The red represents the wind going away from the radar. And then there is your rotation right in there. You will see that become much more intense as we go forward in this video. All right, we're going to go back to the reflectivity now. And we're going to go forward in time. Just watch how quickly this intensifies. Now we have that textbook supercell thunderstorm look. Here is your forward flank downdraft right here. Still raining heavily in more Oklahoma. And now we have that well-defined hook, that textbook hook echo. As we put on the velocity mode, we have our tornado vortex signature. So now we have that couplet. That very type couplet is the green going toward the radar, the red away. That is your tornado vortex, uh, tornado vortex signature. All right, so back on the reflectivity perspective, look at this. You see that red little ball there turn to purple. This is when things get extremely intense. To the north of Newcastle, to the west of Moore, we can confirm that there is a tornado in progress here because of the intense nature of this color. This lavender color here, we call this a debris ball. So that is now the radar beam shooting out from the radar in Norman, Oklahoma, and the beam running into something that is not rain. It is coming back highly reflective. This is debris that is being tossed into the sky by the tornado that is on the ground from a velocity perspective, extremely intense. Obviously, we know the damage that it did, but from a radar perspective, you're not going to find a more textbook and a more intense look here on radar. Just see how well-defined that couple it is. Again, the greens racing toward the radar. The reds going away from the radar, that extremely violent circulation that is ongoing here. And of course, for perspective, there is more. Unfortunately, that tornado is working its way through. Keep an eye on that lavender and black ball there, that debris ball. Look how much more well-defined it gets as it continues to go through, unfortunately, people's homes in cars, in trees, things of that nature. That is what, unfortunately, the tornado is lofting up into the sky and the radar is seeing. Here we go at 417. It's starting to enter the southwest side of Moore now. Again, that extremely well-defined hook, that big black ball there, that debris ball, as we call it. Look at it from a velocity standpoint. 
extremely violent here. Insane, insanely strong winds being sampled by the radar going towards and away. Again, I'll draw it out here, that very violent rotation that is coming through circled right there. And then as we approach the 430 hour, that's when we start to see it move through the south side of more Oklahoma. The debris beginning, beginning to become wider, more pronounced from a radar perspective. That big black there, the debris just on the southwest side of Moore at this point, getting ready to roll right through the heart of town. And eventually does that just before 4.30 on May 20th, 2013. And then we start to see the radar drop out a little bit. As it gets closer to the radar, it has a little bit of a, a harder time sampling the data. There is the radar site right about there. And here is our textbook supercell. Shortly after, though, it moved through more. This tornado lifts, and the storm itself falls apart on the ground for about 14 miles. But unfortunately, it was an extremely destructive and deadly 14 miles, of course, as this thing moved through Moore, Oklahoma. I mentioned earlier in the video that Moore has an awful tornado history. These are three tracks of violent tornadoes that move through Moore, Oklahoma. The green circle there, that green outline, represents the tornado that we just took a look at, the EF5 tornado from 2013 that developed just to the north and west of Newcastle, moved through the south side of Moore. 1999, there was another F5. There's a difference between the F5 and the EF. Building codes changed. We'll get into that in a second. But in the late 90s, they were still F5 tornadoes. Look at the intersection there. So parts of Oklahoma literally dealt with two of these things intersecting the same paths from 1999 and then 2013. And then we have this blue color coming in. So four years after the extremely violent tornado, uh, the F5 tornado of 99, on the north side of Moore, a very violent F4 tornado touched down just to the west of downtown Moore and then moved through the north side of town. Look at the intersection there. So the same places that were hit by that F5 tornado in 99 were then hit by the F4 tornado in 2013. Again, intersecting there. The lone difference between the 99 F5, that went on the north side of Moore, and then in 2013, the EF5, the destructive, violent tornado, moved through the south side of Moore. So here is the recap here from the damage survey. Again, National Weather Service survey, uh, National Weather Service survey teams went out, surveyed the damage, and again, these are rated based on a damage scale, so not in real-time measurements here. They estimated that winds were on the order of 200 to 210 miles an hour. It was on the ground for 14 miles, and its maximum width was just over a mile. And you see there that yellow highlight there. That was the path crossing I-35 impacting the south side of Moore. And again, for reference, Oklahoma City is, of course, north of Moore, Oklahoma. Mention the difference. The Vegeta scale turned into the enhanced Vegeta scale in 2007 due to updated building codes. So that is why it is the enhanced Vegeta scale now that the F scale, the Vegeta scale, went all the way up to 2007. I mentioned before that the 2013 Moore tornado was the last EF5 tornado in the United States since then. But again, it does not take an EF5 to cause destructive damage. We have seen incredible damage from EF4s, EF3s, even EF2s. Again, if these violent storms hit something, they are going to cause a lot of damage more often than not. It does not take an F5 tornado. So this is the crazy stat that I wanted to share with you guys. We talked about earlier in the video. All right, so we mentioned about the EF5 drought. And again, that is a good thing, okay? But since the more EF5 tornado of 2013... There has been no F5s or EF5s recorded in the United States. 2013 started this record stretch. That is the longest period we have gone without seeing an EF5 or F5 tornado on record. Here's the crazy part. In 1999, that more tornado, that started the previous record stretch of going without, of going without seeing an F5 tornado. That stretch would eventually be broken by the 
extremely intense EF5 tornado in Greensburg, Kansas. That broke the streak on May 4th, 2007. Literally eight years in one day to the day from the May 3rd F5 tornado. Also, interestingly enough, the Greensburg, Kansas tornado was the first EF5 tornado. Again, that scale went into effect in February of 2007. So Greensburg, Kansas uh, will always hold that record of being the first EF5 tornado because of the increased building codes. Of course, thinking of everybody impacted by that extremely violent tornado and all of those tornadoes, again, it doesn't take an EF5 tornado to create insane damage. We've seen it time and time again. A lot of people say, oh, this has to be an EF5. When you see these crazy videos coming out, EF3s, EF4s can do a lot of damage as well. The main things that the National Weather Service are looking for when they survey these things are some of those crazy things, the those big propane tanks thrown, tossed miles like missiles. And the main thing that the National Weather Service survey teams look for are, unfortunately, are slabs of well-built structures, not only destroyed, but wiped clean. That is the distinction between the EF4 that, again, destroys communities, and then the F5, again, which we haven't had since 2013. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you enjoyed this content, and, if, and, I, and I say enjoy loosely, just learning about the science here. Of course, nobody wants these storms moving through communities. Nobody. But if you found this content informative, please give this a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more weather content and to stay up to date on all things weather. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.